SpaceX just revealed something major at Starbase. The first real lunar starship HLS is taking shape, and it's not another test vehicle. Ship 44 mysteriously vanished from the normal production line back in August, right when SpaceX confirmed the HLS cabin was under fabrication. What happened to it? NASA's Orion spacecraft is struggling with thermal shield problems and hatch malfunctions, pushing Artemis timelines further back. Meanwhile, SpaceX is targeting HLS test flights for 2026, a full year before Artemis 3. Could Musk's prediction come true, that landing on the moon would be easier than convincing NASA it's possible? Here's the story behind Ship 44. Back in August, this particular starship was moving through production alongside ships 39 through 42 when something unusual happened. S-44 suddenly stopped progressing. No announcements, no explanations. At the exact same time, SpaceX quietly confirmed the HLS crew cabin had entered fabrication the timing was too perfect to ignore. Fast forward to early December. S-44 reappeared inside the star factory, but it looked completely different. No heat shield tiles, no aerodynamic flaps. Just a stripped-down hull suggesting a mission profile that has nothing to do with atmospheric re-entry. For anyone tracking SpaceX's development, this is the clearest signal yet that S-44's nose section has been repurposed into the first functional HLS crew cabin. The evidence keeps stacking up. SpaceX has already completed 49 critical milestones in hardware testing for the Lunar Lander program. That's not paperwork. That's actual hardware being built and validated. The elevator system that will lower astronauts to the lunar surface is under development. The landing legs designed to support 100 tons on the moon are being tested. Life support systems for extended lunar stays are in qualification. This is real progress happening right now, while most people are still debating whether Starship can even work. The timeline tells us everything we need to know. If SpaceX maintains its current flight rate, Ship 39 flies on Flight 12, Ship 40 on Flight 13. That puts Ship 44 in position for Flight 17, likely in the second half of 2026. This placement falls perfectly between two major milestones, the orbital refueling demonstration in June 2026 and the uncrewed HLS lunar landing in June 2027. The refueling demo proves SpaceX can transfer propellant between two starships in orbit, the fundamental technology making lunar missions possible. Once that's validated, Flight 17 becomes the first to carry the actual HLS variant into space for systems testing. There's a practical reason HLS won't participate in the June refueling demo. That test validates docking mechanisms and fluid transfer protocols using a simpler tanker configuration. You don't need the complex HLS cabin and landing systems just to prove you can move fuel between ships. Once the refueling architecture works, then HLS gets its own dedicated test campaign. This development pace becomes even more striking when you see what's happening with NASA's Orion spacecraft. After Artemis 1's test flight, engineers discovered unexpected thermal protection damage during re-entry. Months of investigation followed. Then, in November, another problem emerged. A blemish in the thermal barrier around the crew hatch prevented proper sealing. The repair took one day, but it delayed a critical countdown demonstration from November 19th to December. NASA insists Artemis II remains on schedule for April 2026, possibly even February. But these repeated issues reveal something deeper than normal development challenges. NASA's technical capability remains world-class. Engineers catching thermal barrier defects before flight are doing exactly what they should.
finding problems on the ground beats discovering them at 25,000 miles per hour during re-entry. The issue isn't technical competence, it's the system those engineers work within. NASA operates inside a framework that prioritizes absolute certainty over speed, where every decision gets reviewed by multiple oversight layers and political considerations often override engineering efficiency. Inside NASA, a significant faction views Starship with deep skepticism. Some comes from legitimate engineering concerns about such a radically different architecture. But much stems from institutional pride and the Apollo legacy. NASA's old guard remembers building Saturn V and putting 12 Americans on the moon using government-developed technology. The idea that a private company led by a self-taught entrepreneur could achieve similar results faster and cheaper challenges, everything they've believed about how space exploration should work. But there's a layer most people miss. NASA is legally required to continue developing SLS and Orion regardless of what SpaceX accomplishes. Congress mandated these programs, and congressional funding comes with strings attached. Even if Starship proves fully operational tomorrow, NASA can't abandon SLS. The political reality is more complex than technical comparisons. This is where Blue Origin's New Glenn enters the picture. Even though New Glenn can't match Starship's capability, it offers Congress something valuable. Competition. Politicians rarely want a single company dominating any market, especially one as strategically important as space access. New Glenn provides political cover for eventually transitioning away from SLS by giving lawmakers a choice between commercial options rather than handing everything to SpaceX. That's why NASA reopened the Artemis three lander contract and brought Blue Origin back as an alternative its strategic positioning as much as technical hedging. Back in July 2019, Musk told Time magazine something revealing. It may literally be easier to just land Starship on the moon than try to convince NASA that we can. At the time, this sounded like typical bravado. But look at where we are now. SpaceX won the HLS contract in 2021 after NASA evaluated proposals across technical merit, cost, and management capability. SpaceX scored highest in all three with a fixed-price contract of just $2.9 billion, far less than competitors. The key factor, proven reusability. SpaceX didn't just claim Starship would be reusable, they had already demonstrated it at scale with Falcon 9, flying the same boosters dozens of times and launching NASA astronauts on reused hardware. That operational track record made Starship's reusability claims credible in a way paper studies couldn't match. Yet skepticism persists. While doubters keep questioning whether Starship can work, something remarkable is happening. SpaceX's commercial revenue is projected to exceed NASA's entire annual budget next year. NASA will account for less than 5% of SpaceX's revenue, a complete reversal from early days when NASA contracts kept the company alive. Starlink generates billions in cash flow funding, Starship development without depending on government schedules. This financial independence changes everything, SpaceX no longer needs to convince NASA or Congress to fund its Mars ambitions. The company can self-fund technologies NASA might never approve, moving at whatever pace Musk decides. The relationship with NASA remains operationally important. SpaceX is currently the only provider meeting safety standards for crew transport. But financially, it's become almost irrelevant to SpaceX's broader goals. Those goals extend far beyond lunar landings. Musk's plan to build a self-sustaining Mars city requires transporting millions of tons using a massive Starship fleet. That demands funding beyond anything NASA could provide. SpaceX is exploring satellite constellations for AI computing and power generation in orbit, turning space into the next frontier for artificial intelligence infrastructure. The contrast couldn't be sharper. 
While NASA carefully manages Orion through established processes, SpaceX builds, tests, and iterates at a pace impossible within government constraints. Ship 44's transformation into the first HLS cabin happened quietly, without press releases or congressional briefings. The 49 completed milestones came from hardware being built and tested in Texas, not PowerPoint presentations in Washington. So here's where we stand. Ship 44 is being assembled in Texas right now, transforming from a standard test vehicle into humanity's next lunar lander. NASA's Orion keeps hitting technical delays while SpaceX quietly completes milestone after milestone. The irony is almost poetic. Musk said back in 2019 it would be easier to just land on the moon than to convince the doubters. Five years later, we're watching that prediction play out in real time. This isn't just about one ship or one mission. What's happening at Starbase represents a fundamental shift in how space exploration works. For decades, getting to space meant waiting for government funding, navigating bureaucratic approval processes, and moving at the pace of political consensus. SpaceX changed that equation. With Starlink revenue funding Starship development, the company doesn't need permission anymore. They can build, test, fail, and iterate faster than any government program ever could. The question isn't whether Starship will reach the moon. The hardware is being built right now. The real question is what happens when it does. When Ship 44 or its successor touches down on the lunar surface ahead of Artemis, it won't just be a technical achievement. It will mark the moment when private industry definitively took the lead in space exploration, proving that the old ways of doing things are no longer the only ways. NASA isn't going away, and that's important. The agency's expertise, safety standards, and astronaut training remain crucial. But the balance of power is shifting. The future of space exploration will be written by whoever can move fastest, innovate boldest, and execute most efficiently. Right now, that's SpaceX. What do you think? Will Ship 44 be the first starship to land on the moon? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you want to stay ahead of every major development in space technology, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for Atlas Space. We're tracking this story as it unfolds, and trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching. SpaceX's Dragon docks with the ISS, using a system inspired by mountain bike suspension. The key components cost just a few hundred dollars each from a bike shop. NASA's electronic docking system took decades to develop and ran into tens of millions. What made SpaceX reject NASA's offer to provide their system for free? An engineer and an intern built a prototype using parts from McMaster Car and an online bike store. Total cost, under $3,000 for six springs. NASA engineers said it would never work. So how did this impossible...